elderly veteran calls 911. Then a cop arrives and makes a disturbing discovery. There are those who believe that not all mistakes deserve to be forgiven, because the pain they have caused is so great that no apology no matter how great could heal it. But what if the apologies are sincere and the mistakes they made are duly justified? Never say never, because although there are really unforgivable mistakes, we all deserve the opportunity to be able to apologize, even if that apology comes more than 50 years later. Lewis Hicks, a 92-year-old World War II veteran who had been living in complete solitude in his Austin, Texas home for more than 20 years. In actuality, Lewis's life was not what one would expect from a successful man like him. A decorated military man, squadron sergeant, husband, and family man, Hicks was unable to overcome the after-effects the war left on him, slowly becoming a very different person from the one everyone once knew. On the outside, his house lay spotless, always neatly painted, the garden groomed and filled with flowers every season, and a beautiful red car parked outside the garage door. However, beyond the facade and the image the old man sought to project to the community, inside that lovely family-friendly home lurked the saddest of truths. Lewis Hicks was all alone, and it was all his fault. Loneliness turned him into an unpleasant, distrustful, and sullen person. He would not speak to any neighbor unless it was necessary. He didn't even bother to greet the mailman. In his neighborhood, one of the quietest and most affluent in Austin, everyone who had the opportunity to meet him or simply bump into him on the street feared and ignored him in equal parts. And no wonder, because no matter how hard they tried to socialize with the old man and be nice to him, his reaction was always the same. No thanks, I have a lot to do. That was Mr. Hicks' best-known phrase. Everyone had heard it at one point or another. So over the years, they all decided to stop trying and went on with their lives as he recommended they do. No one knew if the man really needed help, nor had anyone lived long enough in the neighborhood to know if he'd ever been any different, married, or had children. Everyone who knew him had either died or moved away, so there was no one close to him in the neighborhood who could vouch for him in case he had any problems. And he had them, very serious ones. Because Lewis Hicks was far from an old and pleasant man. Years ago, too many years ago in fact, Mr. Hicks was a sweet, kind, and helpful person, the most helpful of men and the most attentive of husbands. His wife Abilene and he were married at only 23 years old and were the parents of two sons, Liam and August. Their marriage was going well, they loved and respected each other, and their children grew up strong and happy. They had problems from time to time, of course, but nothing serious they couldn't be worked out in a couple of days or a conversation. Nobody would have bet that a few years later all the life they had built together would end up disappearing and that Lewis would end up becoming everything he had always hated. And the reason was none other than his pride and his inability to ask for help. When he returned from his last war mission, Lewis was not the same. What he had experienced on the front lines had changed him completely, so much so that not even his family understood him nor could they help him. He withdrew into himself and refused psychological help to talk about what he was feeling. He suffered from anxiety, insomnia, and bad moves became his usual state of mind. The army thanked him for his service to the country and decorated him, but nothing could change him. After becoming a war veteran, his attitude worsened to the point that even his wife did not feel able to talk to him. At one point, she was even afraid of him. Their relationship had become completely unviable. This caused the marriage to break up and his wife, along with his two children who were already teenagers, left him alone with his demons. I hope that someday you'll be able to let yourself be helped, Louis. I have loved you very much, but I can no longer stand by your side. I can't stand by someone who doesn't trust me. I can't stand by someone who doesn't trust anyone and who I feel so much hatred inside. And I don't want my children to grow up feeling all that. Goodbye, soldier. Those were the last words Abley and his wife said to him before she packed her bags and left to live in Florida with her kids. The departure of his wife and children only made the situation worse. It was the straw that broke the camel's back. Not only did Hicks not accept the help that other army buddies offered him, but he began to pick up some very bad habits that would end up bringing him down and pushing him away from everything. His addiction to alcohol and gambling caused all those who knew and cared about him at first to walk away and leave him alone. His inability to cope with his more than obvious psychological problems led him to an extreme situation from which he could no longer get out. A new and harsh reality in which he no longer had any friends or family to turn to and in which the veteran ended up isolating himself completely. Unfortunately, it took many years for Hicks to realize how much he had lost simply because of pride. However, by the time that moment came, it was too late for him to ask for forgiveness and make amends for all the wrong he had done to those he loved most. He had not turned back and resigned himself to a life of loneliness and punishment, locked up in his Texas home. The only home he had never known and the only place where he'd ever been happy. And that is how Lewis Hicks became the unbearable old man we all know now. A sad story in which the old man ended up full of debts and with hardly any money, living inside a house that was outwardly perfect, but inside was completely abandoned and corroded by time. However, life would still have something more to offer him, and when the old man was preparing to say goodbye to this world in complete solitude, 
fate rolled its dice again to give an unexpected turn of events. An unexpected event that made him wake up from the lethargy in which he had been living for more than 50 years. It all started one autumn afternoon like any other. Mr. Hicks was at home as usual and had gone out to his backyard to pick up the dry leaves that had fallen from the trees that week. He should have done it earlier, but he wasn't feeling well, and as he refused to ask a neighbor for help or call a gardener, he kept putting it off until that afternoon when coincidentally he felt more offbeat. However, as the old man began to slowly sweep the leaves, he noticed something that left him completely paralyzed. Someone had been there, probably while he was asleep, and had left the shed door wide open. The old man rushed to check what had happened and discovered that a thief had stolen all his tools. Having never been robbed before, the veteran was very angry and decided he would not remain silent before such an act of vandalism. So, hoping that the police could help him catch the thief quickly, Mr. Hicks called 911. Police quickly responded to the elderly man's complaint and Officer Chastity Salazar was dispatched to the scene to fill out a report and take a statement from Lewis Hicks. Good morning, are you the person who called us about a robbery? The agent asked politely when Hicks opened the door. Indeed, that was me. It's unforgivable for a person of my age to have this kind of thing happen to them. All my gardening tools have been stolen. Come on, I'll show you. Hicks signaled the officer to follow him to the back of the house. The old man was on a cane and moved awkwardly, but he could manage quite well on his own. However, as Officer Salazar went into Mr. Hicks' house to complete the report and check on the condition of the shed, she couldn't help but worry more about the safety of the old man than the thief who had rummaged and burglarized his shed. As she followed Hicks out back, a glimpse of the kitchen left her deeply troubled and she knew she couldn't ignore what she'd seen. In front of Mr. Hicks' gas stove was a portable fan on, and Agent Salazar immediately connected the dots and deduced the veteran was using his oven to heat his cold house. It wasn't the first time she had seen something like this, so she knew instantly. However, she never expected that a neighborhood like that could come across such a thing, let alone in a veteran's home. Of course, this posed a major security problem for the agent who knew immediately she had to do something. After taking a statement from the elderly man, Salazar retreated into the house and discreetly contacted her colleagues at the Austin Police Department to report what she'd found. Hicks was very pleased with the agent's treatment. However, he did not tell her so and instead merely nodded slightly as she spoke and escorted her out when the formalities of the report were finished. However, Salazar couldn't miss the opportunity to find out what was really going on in that house and before the door closed, she asked, Excuse me for asking, Mr. Hicks, but do you have money problems? The question caught the old man completely by surprise who went from astonishment to indifference in a matter of seconds. An awkward silence ensued which the agent was quick to break with another even more direct question. I'm sorry if my question makes you uncomfortable, but it's my duty to find out if anyone's in danger and believe me when I tell you you are. I've seen your cooking and I know what you do. You don't have to do that. It's too dangerous. The police can help you if you need it. Hicks didn't let her finish her sentence. I don't need anyone's help, miss. I don't mean to be rude, but you are overstepping your duties. You've done your job very well. I called you about a robbery, nothing more. And now if you don't mind, I have a lot of things to do. There it was once again his famous phrase to keep everyone away, however Agent Salazar would not be so easy to chase away. You can pretend all you want, but it won't work with me. I'm a policewoman and I come from a poor family. I've seen a lot of misery, a lot of mismanaged problems. Believe me, I know a problem when I see one. I'm going to leave now because I know deep down the situation makes you uncomfortable and hurts you, but it doesn't mean I'm giving up. Good morning, Mr. Hicks. The agent gently shook his hand and gave him a strained smile before turning walking away to the car. That night, Lewis did not sleep well, and it was not because of the theft of his tools, but because of Salazar's words that kept repeating in his head. That young woman had realized he was in trouble, and despite being unpleasant to her, she had not left in anger, nor had she been frightened. Hicks felt a deep respect for the young policewoman's attitude and wondered when he would see her again. A question that didn't take long to resolve. For just three days after their first meeting, Agent Salazar showed up again at his door with a gift he would be unable to refuse. The agent had pulled all the necessary strings to get a new heating system for Hicks. After leaving his home, the officer and her colleagues contacted Austin Comps for Charities, Austin Police Association and St. David's Foundation, and within hours they were able to get the veteran a brand new heater free of charge. When Lewis Hicks opened the door and saw what they'd brought him, he was speechless, and for the first time in more than 50 years he couldn't pretend and burst into tears. Salazar, who understood perfectly how the old man felt, simply waited on the doorstep while the old man composed himself. You don't have to explain to me what's happening to you. I don't need to know the truth to help you. I've done what I had to do. I only hope you can enjoy this gift that the Austin police and your charities are giving you. It's for you, Mr. Hicks. Salazar said kindly to the old man to take the pressure off. The police officers installed a new heater in the home of the old man who was deeply grateful. So before she left, he asked her to come over so he could talk to her for a moment. I was nasty to you. I practically threw you out of my house the other day and you gave me a heater. Why? Hicks asked intrigued. Because a thing doesn't have to be true to seem true. My father left home when I was 9 years old. Can you imagine what my life was like since then? 
We were five siblings and my mother couldn't support us. At first she refused to ask for help out of pride but then she had to give in because it was her pride or starve us to death. Her courage and generosity are my inspiration to be a better cop every day. So when I saw you needed help and refused to ask for it, I didn't hesitate to do what was necessary to protect you. I don't need you to be kind, to know your suffering. That is my duty to care for and protect everyone. It doesn't matter if they're nice or not, everyone deserves my help and you're no exception. Explain the policewoman with a determination Hicks had already forgotten. You don't know how much I missed hearing that, officer. I think I'd forgotten everything worth fighting for and all to keep my pride. Your generosity has reminded me that many years ago I was also like you, a brave soldier. But then I let myself be carried away by fear and I lost everything, confessed the old man. You still have time, as long as you remember there's one last chance. Don't forget it, Mr. Hicks, Salazar told him warmly before leaving. And he really had it. After his revealing conversation with Agent Salazar, the old man let himself be helped by her and try to contact his family again to apologize. Unfortunately, after two weeks of searching, they were found, but Hicks discovered that his beloved wife, Abilene, whom he had let go one day without even trying to fight for her, had died seven years ago from Alzheimer's. The good news is that their children were very well, both married with children themselves, and the two were still living in Florida. At first, they were very reluctant to talk to their father, feeling a lot of resentment for what happened, but after reading the apologies he sent them by letter, they decided to give him a chance to explain themselves. Lewis Hicks had a second chance, late but still there, and all thanks to a great act of generosity that managed to remind him of who he was before becoming a grumpy old man. His story has to serve as an example for all of us because it's never too late to learn something new, much less to apologize. Did you like this touching and surprising story? If so, we invite you to leave us a comment expressing your opinion. If you want to continue enjoying inspiring stories like this one, subscribe to our channel or check out the other videos shown at the bottom of the screen. Thank you for your cooperation.